Do you ever feel unmotivated while studying? Does studying ever make you tired or just blah? Well, in this video, we explore how to get past the blah and learn to even enjoy studying. Zion, it's Zion the Lion, Zion the Lion, Zion the Lion. Whoa, Zion the Lion, Zion the Lion, Zion the Lion. Your reason. Studying can be challenging. Anything from a mind-boggling algebra equation that you just can't wrap your head around to some scientific concept that you're sure contains a typo. The challenges in studying are just unavoidable. Other times, studying can just be boring. Say you're learning piano, which is in fact a study, and you have to learn a scale by playing it repeatedly. Or maybe you're learning U.S. history, and you have to read the U.S. Constitution, most of which you barely understand. What you need in times like those and many other similar scenarios is motivation. Motivation is a reason or incentive to do something. It's your reason why. Let's explore how to find your why to keep you going just that little bit further. The bigger picture. A painter stands in front of a large canvas, brush in hand, subject of portrait in view. All right, where should I begin? He mutters to himself. The nose, an ear, maybe an eye? Whatever he chooses, he knows that he will reach the other parts eventually. However, to get there, he must take a step back every once in a while to get a sense of where he is within the project and to refresh his perspective. The same goes for studying. You must take a step back from time to time to refresh your perspective, to see where you are, and to process what you just learned. Take five every 20 to 30 minutes. Take a walk. Make some tea. Read your study notes to your dog. Speaking of notes, if you are reading a large chunk of text, take a breather every few paragraphs to ponder what you just read and to jot down some notes. Then, every few pages, take a pause and read your notes back to yourself or your dog. That will help you to see where you are, and you'll find that you're learning way more than you thought, and that feeling is motivation in itself. I promise you, you'll learn so much more by looking at the bigger picture. It may be kind of fun if you approach study with a positive attitude and turn the monotony into an active learning experience. Surprise bonus segment. I get it. You need a break. Everything in this video is a lot to take in at once. The same is with studying. We study, 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 and then we're just expected to know the thing afterwards. But that's not how anything works. In order to properly learn something, and in order to truly know something, you need to implement that thing into your life somehow. But don't worry, I'll show you exactly how to do that later in this video. End of bonus segment. Enjoy the process. Most people don't read novels for the ending. In fact, I dread the ending because it means the journey is over. The enjoyment is found from page to page. Living in the moment is important, even in the hard portions of study. Don't work too hard to memorize large sections of text, concepts, and theorems. Just expose yourself to them and implement them into your life through thought, conversation, and curiosity. Or maybe even writing and vlogging like I do. Talk about what you learn to the people around you, just like you would talk about your favorite TV show or video game. Soon enough, you'll find that you just know the things that you're studying internally, the same way you know things about your favorite hobby or singer. If you don't learn to enjoy what you're studying to some extent, it will be more challenging to internalize, and subsequently, more difficult to learn. I know it may not sound easy, but learning to enjoy learning will open the door to a lot of cool discoveries and new opportunities. You just have to apply your mind for the wandering mind. My last tips for studying are ones very personal to me as one with a wandering mind. While I'm studying, my mind often wanders to stuff like my next blog post or like a cool song idea. I have two ways to control that. Number one, eliminate distractions. Number one is to eliminate distractions. All I can think of right now is your phone, the gateway to universal intelligence. Put it in another room. Turn it off. <laughs> Turn it off or adjust the settings to do not disturb. 
anything to give what you're studying the proper respect and attention and to leave no outs for your mind to venture. If you don't eliminate distractions, it will be harder to learn and you will have to study for longer. Contrarily, if you give your work the attention it requires, things will click faster and you won't have to dread those long, dull study hours. Not that there won't be long days. Just redefine the word study to mean times in your life where you can grow your mind. Number two, keep a notepad. My second method for controlling the wandering mind is ironically the opposite. Instead of fighting your thoughts, just release them onto a notepad. That way your mind will have enough room to fit what you're studying. Keep a piece of paper or a notepad by you while you're studying to jot down notes that divert you from the task at hand. Just be careful, don't let that become a distraction in itself. Work to strengthen your mental fortitude and stay focused. Internalizing your studies is also a way to keep your mind on task. Talk about what you're learning and get excited about it. Zion's Conclusion Don't view studying negatively. Learning should be reason enough to immerse yourself in the study of a particular subject. Remember to step back, view the bigger picture, enjoy the process of learning, though it may be tough, and eliminate distractions to stay focused. Take a deep breath, get some water, and let's get back to learning.